Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch the Fire Twice, I'm Joshua, and I'm here today to do an in-depth sniff candle review of Bath & Body Works Signature Single Wick Candle Patchouli & Rosewood in their new 8-ounce single wick form, as well as a bit of an historical overview of the Bath & Body Works single wick candle forms and variations over the years. But first, if you are new to Touch the Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you want to learn more about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, you can check out my website at touchthefiretwice.com. But for now, let's dig into the candles. So we'll get into the patchouli and rosewood candle scent strength throw performance, an in-depth sniff overview and understanding of the fragrance notes that make up the blend. But before we do that, I also want to talk through just historically at Bath & Butterworks, what are the different forms that their single wick candles have taken over the years? So everyone is most familiar with the absolute classic 14.5 ounce, three wick candles at Bath & Butterworks. That's been their standard go-to since at least what the early 2000s, the Slacken & Co era or partnership began in about 2005 through 2012. So certainly during that time period, they were producing the 14.5 ounce three wick candles that we all know and love today. And then at some point around that same period in the early aughts, they did a four ounce single wick that was really an exact miniature version of the 14.5 ounce. This just has the one single wick, but it had the exact same chrome lid same shape, four ounces versus your 14.5 ounces. The retail on these back in the day when the three wicks were 1950, these were 950, so not a great value in that sense. But typically when they would do a two for 20 promotion on the three wicks, they would do a two for 10 promotion on the single wicks. So $5 each makes a little bit more sense. Still not the best deal for just four ounces of wax. So those were in existence pretty much from let's say 2005 to about 2012 when they were replaced. But they added on to those before they got rid of them, they added on these sweet little babies of these miniature candles. First launched, I want to say probably early 2011, they came with this little plastic dust cover versus a lid with holes so you could smell it. And originally they were plastic. So this was 1.6 ounces, retailed for $3.50. And probably about halfway through 2011 by 2012, they replaced them with the same form factor, a single wick with a plastic dust cover, but they replaced the plastic vessel with a glass vessel, really just matching the four ounce glass or the 14.5 ounce glass vessels. And they did drop the candle size from 1.6 ounces in the plastic to 1.3 ounces in the glass. So this was by early 2012, they had the glass tester candles. I think they might've called them, referred to them as tester candles, just because it was really just to test a fragrance, you know, smaller than most votives. Most votives are closer to two ounces. And they did promos, I think typically three for 10 on these. Not the best deal, but if you wanted to test a fragrance or sometimes if they were doing, you know, a spring preview or a summer preview that have four or five tester scents in the front of the store, pick up a handful of these. Nice way to get the burn, understand if you like it or not. So they were, they were cute, they were fine. They were not incredibly popular and they ended up, I think, just being phased out probably by 2012, 2013, which was the same time that they phased out the four ounce single wicks. So these were sold at the same time alongside your three wick 14.5 ounces. And then around the time of the Slacken & Co partnership ending at L Brands, Bath & Body Works, White Barn Candle Company, they moved on to what you see here as a mason jar single wick candle. So of course, they've always maintained the 14.5 ounce three wick candle, but the four ouncer was discontinued in this form factor and replaced with the mason jar. Kind of a very traditional, farmhouse style mason jar, which was very, very popular during that 2012, 2013 time period. It had that tapered glass, the big sort of aluminum or sometimes almost like galvanized metal screw on lid. And that was a six ounce candle. So you increased from four ounces to six ounces. And then probably by about 2016 or 17, we didn't see many of those traditional mason jar styles anymore. They moved on to kind of the current mason jar form factor, just a straight jar. Sometimes it is clear, sometimes it is a wraparound, sometimes they've done this sort of apothecary darker amber colored glass. So different art direction and styles, but the actual vessel shape and lids have been this traditional, not tapered, just a straight down cylinder. And they actually increased from six ounces to seven ounces with this wider flat mason jar. Now they still call it mason jar. I was surprised because I, in my mind, mason jars were the old tapered ones, but a mason jar is just defined as a glass jar with a wide mouth and an 
an airtight screw top, which this very much is. So this is considered a mason jar. These at one point had a retail of about $14.50, at least when this was poured in late 2017. Although now we know their mason jar seven ounce single wick candles in 2023 are retailing for $15.95. Now they seem to be keeping this form factor, their mason jar single wicks, and they just now added what they're calling their signature single wick candles. And these are in the very traditional glass jar. As of right now, they either have this sort of white barn neutrals label or a clear sticker with some watercolor or sort of artwork design. So two very different art direction and aesthetics across a mixture of fragrances. Seems like a new collection for the spring has come out with Flower Child and Under the Magnolia Tree, a tea tree and fresh mint, and then some of the classics that we've seen, you know, in sort of the white barn core, your white tea and sage, your champagne toast, really the core fragrances. And here and there are some new ones, in this case, a new one with patchouli and rosewood. This really does match the aesthetic more so of their 14.5 ounce three wick candles in, you know, the clear glass or sometimes wrap around labels with that traditional chrome metal lid, more so than your mason jar screw-ons. I think that what is interesting with this although I failed to mention one ounce more with your eight ounces, but it goes up by $2 to $17.95. $17.95 is fairly expensive for a Bath & Body Works eight ounce single wick candle, considering, you know, most of the time people are paying more like 11 to $13 for the 14.5 ounce three wicks when they're on any sort of traditional sale, layering a coupon on top of that. That's the general selling price that most folks who are frequent shoppers are trying to or willing to pay for them. This, they did a launch sale of $10 for folks that were members of the Bath & Body Works Rewards program, which anyone can be if you're not, you might as well sign up if you're a shopper there, uh, for $10, which is fine, not great when hopefully the three wicks that are 14.5 ounce go to $12.95, typically, hopefully, as the sale that we get when it's the good sale versus a 10 off, which is now 17 to $20 for the three-wick candles. Certainly, the prices are creeping up. They will continue to creep up. Hopefully, they'll level off for a while and give us some good deals. All that to say, not necessarily the best value unless they do all single-wick sales, which they may do where if they say all single-wicks, $8 or $10, that's not so bad. If you ha if you can pay $10 and put a coupon on this, which I actually did have a 10 off 40 coupon I used, makes it a, just a fine price. And you are getting an extra ounce. And what I will say, sort of what I think of the the aesthetic. I actually really like this. I think it's elevated beyond this. Some folks might like the fact that this is a screw-on lid and it's, you know, easier to store or, you know, have it stay on. I think that this really looks like they're leaning into, you know, calling it signature as the signature look of Bath & Body Works. They're trying to sort of up their game with their art direction, their aesthetic, sometimes with their fragrances as well, which has been great to see some more experimental or fine home fragrance style fragrance blends. And with this, they really can lean into that, though it seems like it's a bit of a mixed bag of what art direction they're using and what fragrances they're throwing into this signature line. It's not a clear vision of exactly why or how they're going to differentiate it from their seven ounce mason jar collections. Unless maybe they'll just slowly phase those out if this is popular enough. Maybe it's a, a nationwide test. Who really knows? Anything's possible with Bath & Body Works. They're very, very tuned into data-driven product releases and they assess how what's how something sold, how it's sold, and they iterate and innovate from there. So they're very, very good at being uh, reactive to what sells and, and what the Bath & Body Works average consumer, which keep in mind, I and probably almost everyone watching this video would not be considered an average consumer from Bath & Body Works, but what the average consumer is going to purchase there, they're very tuned into that and they pivot pretty easily and and was seemingly effortlessly to do that. So kind of impressive from a, a business standpoint for as massive with their thousands and thousands of stores as they are. Tangent, but <laughs> worth noting. However, I think it's a nice aesthetic. This looks a lot like the aesthetic and design of many fine or sort of mid-market 30, 40, $80 candles out there. So I do sort of give them the props for offering this clean, you could argue sophisticated, simple look. And I actually really am a fan of this lid. At first I thought maybe it was just going to sit on here without a gasket because I recently purchased a Maison Cire single wick candle, which I'll be reviewing in another video in the coming weeks. And it has a metal lid on it, but it doesn't have a gasket, so it just kind of sits on there. And that's an expensive candle. This one with your, you know, $10, 10 to $18 candles has your gasket as you would expect, like the three wick candles. 
and it just, I think it looks great. To me, it works. $17.95 is what it is. Wouldn't pay full price, but when you get it on sale, then that's fine. That is my sort of overview of the history of the single wick candles and what I think of this one. Now let's get into the in-depth sniff review of Patchouli and Rosewood. I will start by saying just the burn performance. As with any single wick candle, it takes longer than your three wick candles. This was lit for probably two and a half hours, not quite three hours. It had a wonderful throw. That it was no issue, but it happens to be a fairly strong fragrance. And it almost pulled out all the way. It didn't quite. I did not foil this like I do with most single wick candles and certainly most luxury candles, unfortunately, require sort of babying and having a foil around them to get it fully pulled out. And then most of the time you can take it off and they'll remain pooled and from then on burn better. Uh, but with this one, I didn't do it because I was like, well, it should work, but let's see what happens. If I'd gone longer, it probably would. I imagine I, if I burn this again long enough, it probably will pull out all the way. But all that to say, performance, acceptable, certainly for the eight-ish dollars I paid for it with the coupon I used. And now let's get into the actual fragrance review itself, the, the primary purpose of this and, and all videos for the scent of patchouli and rosewood. Now this is the first time I believe that this has appeared wide, certainly in this single wick collection. It does not currently have a three wick counterpart, though patchouli and rosewood did appear as a part of a few test fragrances within the ingredients collection that came out earlier this year, which you can see I did my review video here on that, where you had your coconut vetiver and your birchwood and bergamot. They also had a coffee and tonka, which apparently was just a repackage of Paris Cafe, kind of weird, uh, which I did not sniff, but Kent of the Candle Channel reviewed that and talked how it was a repackage of Paris Cafe. And then this patchouli and rosewood was also in sort of the two or three failed test fragrances from the collection that did not go wide. And but we are now getting that fragrance here in the single wick, you know, close to a year later, which is interesting. The fragrance story they give us is a vintage apothecary, floral and woodsy with a hint of spice. And the notes are simply patchouli flowers, pink pepper, and exotic rosewood. Now, what I think about it, it really almost seems like a fine fragrance dupe to me. I don't know what or where. It leans toward, you know, perfume, fine fragrance. I'm gonna get into the notes because I wanna dig into, you know, patchouli flower and pink pepper and, and rosewood and all that, because I do think some of those notes you may think are one thing and you might be surprised what they actually are and how they present themselves. But this feels very perfumey. It feels warm, it feels luxurious. There's certainly a strong rose in there, but there's a deep wood in this as well. There's a bit of a spiciness from your patchouli, but not intensely spicy. It's more herbaceous and very sweet. Patchouli can come across as a quite sweet herbaceous note, and I'm getting the sweetness from this. Pink pepper I would not have picked out on my own. Uh, it often brings a, a bright, fresh sort of sharpness, which this is bright, it's strong. I don't necessarily call it fresh. It is more, you know, a woodsy, somewhat spicy, somewhat herbaceous, fresh fragrance with some heavy rose in there, but rose wood, not just your traditional rose flower. But what they don't mention here that I, I feel like must be in here is some musk or even amber. I, it is very powdery, resinous, sweet, fluffy, warm, borderline animalic, but sweetly musky rich resinous feeling that that amber sometimes for me it almost makes you go like this because it's so it, it can be overwhelming uh, but it's it's balanced in here but there's got to be some sort of amber or at least some you know labdanum or, or benzoin or something in here which that in itself is some of what takes this into that kind of fine luxury fragrance because you are getting a blend in here that is not scared off from heavier, muskier, amber-like scents. So for me, it's almost more like an amber rose. And, and funnily enough, I mentioned that that Maison Sur candle that is similar in appearance to this one. And I actually got a fragrance sample of one of that collection's personal fragrance. And it is called Ombre Magique. And it actually is a rose-focused amber fragrance. And boy, if this doesn't remind me somewhat of that. By no means do I think it's a duplicate of that. There's a lot more going on in there. and. I can't imagine them doing uh, a duplicate of something quite so niche, though anything is possible. But this for me, again, is 
less about being just woodsy, spicy herbal, and it's more rosy amber to me. So I think that if you like those sort of ambers, though not maybe your, tra your traditional you know, grandma amber, I think that this is very much in your wheelhouse. I enjoy it. It does feel elevated. Not your fresh springy rose, which is why I was comfortable burning it now in January because it's not dewy, bright. It is very much a rose focused, though not pure floral blend. So let's dig into these notes a bit because there's some interesting stuff here. So before we talk patchouli flower, let's just talk patchouli. So patchouli is strong, slightly sweet, herbaceous, spicy, intoxicating, a bit dark, kind of a musky, earthy, woody profile. You sometimes will have a traditional Indonesian patchouli that is distilled in the traditional Indonesian manner. That's gonna have a floral sweetness to it, a rich root-like delicate earthiness, a little bit barnyard-like, though not musty. Or the European-American distillation method is gonna be a much sweeter, richer, spicy, aromatic, herbaceous patchouli, almost like an added fruity wine-like sweetness, less of the woody earthy. But, the flowers are a bit different. You don't hear of patchouli flower as frequently. And that is a different note because traditional patchouli, whether it is the Indonesian distillation method or the European and American distillation method, is going to be the dried leaves crushed and the oil distilled from the leaves versus the flowers. A patchouli flower is going to be reminiscent of that fragrance, but it's warm, a bit more, you know, they say almost peaceful, a bit more lightly scented than the oil that's distilled from the leaves, but reminiscent of that musky, sweet, and spicy patchouli. Moving over to pink pepper, very different than traditional black pepper. So it's not just a feminine version of pepper or, you know, a, an adjective used to describe pepper that is there just to make you think something differently. It actually is a different plant entirely. So pink pepper is going to smell bright, cheerful, with a woody, rosy scent. And makes sense it's going to be with any sort of rose forward fragrance blends. But it is different than that nose tingling warm black pepper. So pink pepper comes from the Brazilian pepper tree or the Peruvian pepper tree, which are actually relatives of mangoes and cashews. Uh, not the Piper nigrum plant, which is where your traditional black pepper comes from that you use to spice your food. Pink pepper also is edible and is used in food, and it typically has a bit more of a citrusy flavor than that spicy nose tingling black pepper. But when it comes to fine fragrance, pink pepper is going to add a pleasantly sharp, bright freshness, just not that as spicy as you're gonna get from your black pepper. And then moving into rosewood. Of course, everyone knows what a rose flower smells like, but rosewood is quite different. You would think, oh, it must be the wood from a rose bush. Actually, not at all, surprisingly. So rosewood is floral, slightly rose-like, but a woody fragrance. So there is, this actually is wood, not rose in this fragrance blend. Uh, and actually it's originally from the Brazilian rosewood tree known as the Aniba Rosadora tree, grown in the rainforests of Brazil, Mexico, and Peru. That's where the rosewood oil was originally distilled from this tree that grows flowers, but not roses, in fact. Just call that based on the color of the bark and that the scent of the bark is very reminiscent of roses, but though it does not produce the traditional rose that you're used to seeing. In fact, the flowers are sort of like a bell-shaped light purplish blue flower on a large tree, not a, a shrub or a bush. Though that Brazilian rosewood is typically actually no longer used for the rosewood fragrance that it was originally forested for because it is an endangered species, it is protected to prevent deforestation. And at this point, other woods have replaced it or even just other sort of accords or blends that evoke that rosewood scent. And you may think, why is that tree called the rosewood tree if it doesn't actually produce roses? But it actually owes its name to the fact that the wood itself is a pinkish rose color. And there is to the wood once you know distilled, a rose scent. Now often they use a mixture of linalool, which is a naturally occurring fragrance terpene, blended with citrus, maybe some pedigrain, which is the oil from the leaves and stems of the bitter orange tree, and they make a fragrance that is reminiscent of the Brazilian rosewood tree made up of other notes and woods. But the scent itself is said to be pinkish, spicy, peppery floral notes with woody facets somewhat similar to cedar wood. It can be soft and supple, a little bit earthy or a bit of a mineral effect and brings a natural harmony oftentimes to floral bouquets. So it really balances just your bright, dewy, heady florals with this woody depth. And then of course, amber, not listed in the notes, but whether it's coming from that rosewood or the fact that it's patchouli flowers, I actually think that, you know, 
any fragrance, especially when the Inspired Fragrance is not going to be three notes. There's going to be more going on in there. I think there's gotta be some sort of amber, whether it's labdanum or benzoin. You know, an amber is not gonna be your ombre gris. It's going to be a blend and a chord of notes to give you that warm, rich, resinous, powdery, sweetly musky fragrance, which I think is absolutely present in here. It feels luxurious, it feels comforting, and it's just really nice. So overall, this is a fragrance that I would not typically expect from Bath & Body Works. It does lean, if you like, you know, traditionally perfumey scents or, or, or scents that are, are in sort of their signature collection body care fragrance. This is one that I think fits that bill because it does feel like a fine fragrance, not just a fine home fragrance. The name Patchouli and Rosewood, I actually think maybe Pink Pepper and Rosewood or Amber Rosewood. Something else would make a little bit more sense because I think folks are going to assume that this is much more earthy than the patchouli flower brings. Either way, name doesn't really matter, it's the fragrance that matters, and it's quite nice. So I recommend checking it out. Let me know what you think of this fragrance if you've smelled it, what your thoughts are on this new signature single wick eight ounce candle, as well as the price point. I would love to hear your thoughts as always, and until next time, take care.